Hi, I'm Peter Robinson. I'm here to talk about who, what, when, where, why, how for Fedora or IoT on Fedora or Fedora on IoT, depending on which way you want to look at it. Um, so the who. Um, the initiative was started by me. Um, the role was provided around three years ago to do it as a full-time um, by the Senior Vice President of RHEL Engineering. Um, and it was, my remit were, is to basically investigate IoT, how it would look from a Fedora RHEL ecosystem perspective, um, so that, you know, ultimately we're not starting from ground zero. Um, we have a small but growing community, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, and I actually have my first full-time team member, other than me, starting on Monday. So welcome, Patrick. Um, yes, Patrick's role is basically a very generic IoT security. Um, so he's going to be dealing with a whole bunch of things, funnily enough, around IoT security. So, but Patrick has a talk tomorrow that where he'll be covering some of this, which is very exciting. Um, so, who is the audience for Fedora IoT? Um, well, the Fedora community in general, because obviously we're just using uh, Fedora. Um, there's an initial focus on a number of use cases. Um, industrial IoT, um, the term which I absolutely despise is Industry 4.0. Um, oil and gas industry, um, and we have a talk about that tomorrow, um, where we actually have a Red Hat customer that is working with us in the Fedora space. Um, and so Chad and I will be talking about how we're dealing with some of the problems that the oil and gas industry has with regards to um, industrial control and various other bits and pieces. Uh, we have a partner that's interested in smart cities, um, automotive, and a bunch of the community, um, including people like the FPL, are interested in home automation and smart homes. Um, I would just like someone to automate the packing of my dishwasher. <laughs> um, and it, it's one of the things that's quite interesting um, about Linux, uh, about IoT in the Linux space is we're actually getting net new people. Um, we had um, a docs writer in February for about a month or so um, who massively improved the docs um, for getting started. And one of the reasons for that was I was getting people going, I've never used Linux before. How do I do this from Windows? Um, which from a increasing the Fedora community and the Fedora ecosystem is a problem that we've wanted to have for some time and we've not. How to, and, and so it's an interesting problem to solve. Um, and of course there's existing Fedora Enterprise Linux and related users. So that's who we're talking about. Um, what? Um, it's now an official, well, has been for some time, an official council objective. We're moving to an addition very soon. Um, we've got a, I've got a whole bunch of list of things to do, um, and there's a few other things for others to do um, before we bake that. It's obviously based on Fedora, standing on the shoulder of giants, i.e. the Fedora wider ecosystem. Um, using Red Hat technology such as OS Tree, SystemD, Podman, FDI, FW Update Manager. Um, as I've said to um, a bunch of different people that I've spoken to at Red Hat over the time, it's basically um, the same puzzle pieces building a different puzzle. So all the same technologies, um, but just we're producing an IoT picture. Um, and part of my role is upstream ecosystem. So the ARM ecosystem through Lenaro, um, engaging in standard initiatives across 
distros to basically help improve the slot or even a little bit help improve the dumpster fire that is generally IoT. Um, and so it's, it's a very wide ranging um, when. Um, I started in this role almost three years ago. I don't know where time goes. Um, I th think three years will be the single longest role I've ever done in IoT. I've averaged usually two, two and a bit years before I've got bored and moved on. Um, and I see Denise in the background shaking her head. Um, like, my role now compared to three years ago doesn't look anything like it was three years ago, yet it looks very similar to what it was three years ago. Um, I don't know how I'm going to actually be able to get bored anytime soon. Um, and like every time I look back, I go, wow, that was busy and that was fast. It's not possible to get any busier and any faster. And it just seems to keep accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. Um, so our first official release was Fedora 29 as a spin. We obviously released Fedora 30. Um, we're promoting to edition really soon now. Um, we're generally doing around monthly feature releases. Um, we're starting, we've started off, it started off quite slowly. Like when I f first started doing this, I thought three years ago, oh, it'll be a couple of months and I'll have, you know, the first release out. And holy hell, I was wrong. And we had all these dependencies and various other bits and pieces I wrapped and unwrapped and repackaged and dealt with, and, and we eventually got there. Um, but it's like quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, why? Um, a traditional RPM, DNF, yum, distro for IoT is not that great. If you've ever lost power during a update and you've tried to work out whether you end up with a bootable system or not, and if, you've, if it actually boots, how, how to get it back to a consistent state, um, doing that across tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of endpoints, millions of endpoints, um, is impossible. Um, like, if you've got 10 million endpoints out in the field and you've got to roll a truck to fix them, that's a problem. Um, I feel Fedora is a good base for an IoT distro. Um, a lot of companies are th throwing like the baby out with the bathwater and not doing basic enterprise style security, like shipping Telnet and not disabling it um, and things like that. And so we've got all this institutional security for enterprise and things like that, that generally mostly just works. So why throw it all away and start from the beginning again? Um, Fedora moves fast, which is good. Like for IoT and things like that, we can get the latest features and functionality in system D, in kernel, in toolchain, um, which around some of the, th the things like the kernel self-protection project, things like that, is going to be useful from an IoT perspective. Um, and yeah, so it's, but you know, one of the advantages we have is it's a generally new use case. We don't have legacy users, so we can think differently and evolve stuff because we don't have J2EE platforms and data, traditional database platforms and things like that that we have to care about whether we break or not. Like, it is net new platform from a Fedora ecosystem point of view. Um, and, and so we can change and evolve things and break things because we don't have um, a tradition of like 20 odd years of uh, Red Hat Linux legacy. Um, how are we doing it? Um, so, Based on RPM OS tree and other related um, atomic core OS technologies, uses OCI container stack, so Podman, Scopio, et cetera. Um, a simple pr compose process um, will be supporting the image builder technology. Um, big focus on security, lots of stuff around 
TPM2, IMA, Systemd, SecCom, SE Linux, Secure Boot, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, you know, ultimately, it's a similar OS to the data center, but without the physical security. So things like storing all the credentials in TPM so they're not recoverable, even from a running OS, is useful in the data center, and a lot of, like, security-focused companies would be interested in it, but probably not as interested as, say, the latest version of Kubernetes or OpenShift or whatever it happens to be. Whereas when you go and strap a device to a light pole or a oil pump or something like that out in the field, you don't have that physical data center security. So device security and things like that is of critical focus. Um, yeah, so we're currently at what I would consider a first phase minimum viable product um, and we're moving quickly. Um, so some of the core components that we're sort of building on top or of this MVB, MVP layer, um, things like OS updates, automatic update, rollback, um, auto scale out of updates, so start to trickle out updates to devices and then scale up or scale back depending on what sort of success rate you get. Um, OS config management, um, so people are like, well, just use Ansible, and like, well, yes, but if you've got 10 million devices and at, at, that are not necessarily always online, um, an Ansible run could take months to complete. So you need a concept of eventual consistency. Um, and I don't know that there's a server out there that Ansible could run on to hit 10 million devices. Um, you know, app management and updates around that, um, well, that's going to look something like Kubernetes to some degree, but Kubernetes running on a device with 2 gig of RAM at the moment is um, interesting. <laughs> um, some form of device management, so hardware failures, firmware updates, things like that, um, and provisioning support and standardization. Um, we're looking at Ignition from CoreOS for this, but it's missing a lot of stuff that uh, is sort of on the nice to have for them, but critical for us. So things like TPM provisioning, device encryption, stuff like that. Um, and how do we support the deployment of millions of devices? Um, and, and there's a lot of initiatives around that from companies like ARM and Intel and that, but none of them are standardized and none of them are open standards. They're all very much how do we lock you into Azure, AWS, various other bits and pieces like that. And that's great, but overall, there needs to be an industry-wide standard for secure deployment of um, that. And I mentioned, you know, eventual consistency for occasionally connected devices. Um, where? Um, so the usual space, we have an IoT landing page um, which links to basically all of this. We have a Kanban board, um, Twitter, IRC, all the usual Fedora communication mediums. And that's me. Does anyone have any questions? Software defined radio? Um, untested. Um, it's, it's certainly a use case. Like, a, a lot of this stuff, like, I only have so many hours in a day, and, like, sometimes, you know, ensuring things like the Raspberry Pi actually boot um, take up a large chunk of time um, and things like that. And so, Things like SDR are like in the back of my mind that people would be interested in it. Um, and so if there's people interested in the community, um, I'm around. Well, so it depends on the use case. So from an SDR point of view, I've not had, I mean, there, there's, we've got, Obviously, Wi-Fi and wired Ethernet, like in a factory, it's probably actually going to be wired Ethernet. Um, they're like 
5G is a topic I talk about quite a bit. Um, SDR is certainly an option. It's not something that I've spoken to a lot of companies about. Um, so from that perspective, it, it just comes down to focus and time. Uh, no, so we're not focused on MCUs. Um, one of the use cases I'm working on with um, the Armour ecosystem is using like Fedora IoT as a gateway to MCUs. So, um, so Zephyr, OS, Zephyr Artos is um, like an open source real-time OS for like a whole bunch of different MCUs and I work quite closely with a number of companies that are working on that. So the idea is that like this would be a gateway to those devices, whether connected by Bluetooth mesh or 802.15.4 or those sort of technologies, or in some cases like hardwired with CAN is another way of communicating. And then this would be sort of the gateway um, for those devices depending on what they do. Yeah, and like I've had in the back of my mind that things like SDR and amateur radio would be a use case that a lot of people would be interested in. Yeah, and I understand that, but they're, they're, that is not the only bit of I, IoT. Like, if you go into a factory, there'll be basically no wireless at all because of the big machines just kill the signal and everything will be hardwired. So, if you're, you're I mean, I, I speak with, I've spoken with literally hundreds of companies with thousands of use cases, um, and like one of the companies I'm working with has like well over a hundred different use cases and that's one company. Um, and, and so like everyone you speak to has a different I idea of what IoT is. It, it's a bit like trying to define cloud five, ten years ago. Everyone had a different idea as to what cloud was. Um, IoT is basically that squared at the moment. It, like there is literally billions of use cases. Anyone else? Oh, I'm going to get off quite lightly with this. Excellent. Um, so the question is how much of the security work will go into the other editions? It, it will all be available. Um, so some of the stuff we're looking at doing around like the system D lockdown stuff and that will probably break a lot of stuff. Um, I actively want to break that in the IoT use case. Uh, for the general use case, that's probably not such a good idea. Um, but it will, like, it will all be going into... Um, so some of the work that Patrick will be focused on will be around TPMs and stuff like that. And that will be going into Fedora and into the upstream community for any other distro. Um, and so things like um, integrity measurement and attestation stuff in the kernel, um, like it's enabled in Rawhide now and it will be a default allow policy in Fedora in general. The IO, we're going to have an active policy um, in Fedora IoT to enforce and measure stuff. Um, for a general purpose OS, that will break shit. Um, I, I don't care, well, I do care, but I'm going to be actively opinionated on breaking stuff in IoT so that we can actively fix it um, and, and make things work in a much more focused manner. And of course, all of that stuff will roll into the standard distro 
um, but there'll be different policies that people can turn on, enable, enforce, what have you, depending on what they want to do. Yes. Yeah, so we're primarily focused on running the application stacks in containers as opposed to on the base OS, um, simply because they're more easy to update and that's the general direction enterprise is going as a whole. Um, and, you know, a lot of, w one of the things that a number of, like, people are excited about is that basically they can use the same workflow they do in the data center on IoT without sort of changing things so they can have the same app dev process for containers on the edge or for applications on the edge that they do in the data center, say running on OpenShift style stuff. So you will be able to do layering and things like that. Um, as a whole, that can be quite problematic. Um, it's randomly broken a number of times in Rawhide of late. Um, and needed to be fixed, and so, but, you know, so there, and it, it's interesting, because there's at least six or seven startups that I'm aware of that are actually playing around and using Fedora IoT in products, um, which is cool, um, and some of them, uh, and like, I had a question on the mailing list the other day, how do I do NPM install or pip install on a like a RPM OS tree read-only file system, and it's like, you don't. So they're, they're basically bundling it all into a big RPM and layering it on top, and I'm like, if you want to do that, it'll work, but it's not going to be our primary way of dealing with this. Because, I mean, ultimately, the advantage of containers is you can run four or five containers alongside each other and they're completely isolated from each other. So if some crappy IoT application decides to start doing bad things, it's isolated and doesn't affect the other devices on the, uh, other applications running on the device. Well, thank you everybody. I'll be around. Um, I have one other talk, and we have a hack fest on Saturday, I think. Um, Patrick will be giving his security talk tomorrow. Um, and, you know, feel free to come and ask questions. <laughs>